Hello, my name is Paulo de Valle Pereira and I'm going to present to you BeaverCube, Costal Imaging with Visual and Long Wavelength Infrared CubeSats. This project is being performed at MIT by undergraduate and graduate students in collaboration with Action Systems and Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. We're going to go through a mission overview, then approach, status, and next steps. As mission overview, Temperature and salinity are key oceanographic properties. Use should determine in density. They are the drivers of the large scale thermal haline ocean circulation and are used to physically classify water masses. The small and mesoscale ocean features, such as fronts and eddies, can be identified and tracked solely using sea surface temperature and salinity properties. The synoptic simultaneous measurement of thermal, bio-optical ocean properties, and salinity through an optical proxy from a CubeSat on can address a multitude of important oceanographic topics for both basic science and naval applications. The algorithm to perform this from a CubeSat leverages statistical relationships between salinity and covariant bio-optical properties, such as absorption by colored dissolved organic matter. The majority of spaceborne optical oceanographic parameters observed from CubeSats rely on products related to atmospheric correlations to provide useful data. BeaverCube is a student-built 3U CubeSat to take the first steps to develop and deploy multi-band imaging sensors that can help obtain the necessary corrections and determine to what extent supplemental data will still be required for atmospheric correction. BeaverCube will measure long wavelength infrared emissions of sea surface and cloud top, using that data to calculate temperature. BeaverCube will also do visible images to measure ocean color. With this data, we hope to collaborate on the scientific study of Earth's climate and weather. Previous measurements from large satellites are accurate, but it's expensive to deploy such satellites. Which, what results in a small number of satellites in orbit, yielding limited observation frequency and location. Besides the weather measurement at relatively low cost, Buricu will also demonstrate the use of tilled, ionic, liquid electrospray propulsion, propulsion technology with Axion for conducting a translational orbital maneuver to extend the mission lifetime. Buricube is also a great educational ex exercise and it's being designed and built by undergraduate and graduate students at MIT. The top image on the right shows Linsat 8 true color image showing water discolored by excess soil, sediments, decaying leaves, pollution, and other debris after Hurricane Florence. The bottom image shows a combining visible and infrared data to show colored dissolved organic matter in the water. Depending on the amount of dissolved particles, the water in natural color imagery can appear blue, green, yellow, or brown as the dissolved organic matter concentration increases. Future missions with BeaverCube will, show the, will expand the correlation measurement with frequency and coverage, and also plan to use shape memory alloy deployables in space. The main mission objectives are to successfully capture a minimum of 20 infrared and 10 visual images of the Earth, measure ocean color and sea surface and cloud top temperature, transmit data to and receive comments from the MIT UHF ground station, operate for at least 90 days, and perform orbital altitude changes. BeaverCube is going to be deployed from the ISS through a NanoRex deployment, which is going to be done at an altitude of 405 kilometers and an inclination of 51.6 degrees. The operations of BeaverCube are going to be comprised of image collection, beaconing for GPS data, uplink and downlink from the MIT UHF ground station, propulsive maneuver, and end of life. A high-level CAD can be seen in this image, and it's the, out box, the outside box is 10.3 centimeters by 10.3 centimeters by 34.05 centimeters. For taking pictures, we'll have the cameras pointing to the Earth, and to downlink, we'll have the Z axis pointing the nadir direction. This image on the right shows the components inside the structure of the CubeSat. Where you can see on the top, we have the payload with the cameras. 
On the middle, we have all the boards comprising of the um, command and data handling boards, the thermal boards, the GPSs, the attitude, the power boards and everything else. And also we have the batteries. And then on the bottom, we have the propulsion unit. In BeaverCube, we are developing not only the payload and, the, and using the propulsion, but we are also developing all the other components of the CubeSat. We are developing, for example, the power subsystem, which is mostly comp composed by three solar arrays, the entire power board, and the batteries. And this is a high-level block diagram of what we are developing in the satellite. We also have a high-level data diagram because we are also doing the command and data handling. We are also doing our own board and we are using mostly two Raspberry Pis to do the computing in our satellite. We know, we already mentioned, that sea surface temperature is an indicator for temperature an anomalies in the ocean and can be used to forecast storms and climate change trends. And we also know the ocean color is used to measure, measure phytoplankton concentration in regions and can also indicate the biological productivity of the region. It can also be used to track the colored dissolved organic matter and can be used to track surface current patterns. And what BeaverCube is using to perform these is using two thermal infrared cameras and one visual camera to detect high spatial and temporal resolution images that measure both the sea surface temperature and the ocean color. And the data that we gather with BeaverCube will help the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute develop higher resolution models of regional ocean processes. These models could help with weather forecasts and help predict migration pattern of marine life and help local fishing industry. To meet these requirements, we are going to use two infrared cameras that were selected as the FLIR Boson 320, which have 320 by 256 pixels, yielding a ground resolution of 348 meters. We have two cameras. One of them will have a filter of around 8.4 to 8.7 micrometer, which leaves the good wavelength for measuring cloud top temperature. The other camera will have a filter of around 11.6 to 12.5 micrometers, which is good for measuring sea surface temperature. The visual camera is going to be a MV Blue Fox with a Koa lens and it has 752 pixels by 480 pixels, yielding a ground resolution of 150 meters. We have tested these two cameras, the visual and the infrared, in a high altitude balloon launch on November 2019. The balloon launch, the balloon reached around 100,000 feet of altitude, which is a good pressure level, 0.162 PSI good for testing before sending something to space. And we were able to take a picture of the top of trees like this one and the top of clouds like this one. And we were able to see that they do still work in environmental conditions that are low temperature and pressure. We are, sorry, the slides are going too quickly. The payload is composed of a sequence of events. We first command a dark frame capture, then we open the shutters and run the image script, which will take three images in series with a delay determined experimentally. We'll then close the shutter and store the images. To calibrate, we are going to use buoys. We would like to use a technique that does not require hardware on board that would allow to reduce overall mass, cost, and complexity for the payload. So we are going to predict the beaver cube location and use that when it overpasses buoys on the oceans to have the bulk water temperature from the, from the buoy and compare that with the temperature measured by beaver cube. And then we are also going to identify the pixel area corresponding to the buoy with the IMU data and have the two data compared to calculate the gain value for the image, both for the infrared and for the visual image. And here is a map with, here is a map with the position of the buoys that we can use to calibrate our system. 
And besides that, we can also do cross calibration with other satellites by predicting coincident events, correcting data for the atmosphere, viewing angles and clouds, and also then calculating the brightness temperature for both Beaver Cube and the cross calibration target. And we are going to consider this cross calibration target at the cross calibration satellite as a good ground truth, and we are going to calculate the Beaver Cube brightness temperature to match those. And these are the satellites that we can use to um, compare and do this cross calibration with Beaver Cube. For the propulsion, we are going to use electrospray propulsion, which is composed by a fuel reservoir, emitter tips, and extractor grid. A high voltage is applied between the emitter tips and extractor grid, around two kilovolts, which, is, which creates a big electric force that overcomes the surface tension of the fuel, making the ions evaporate from the tips. And these ions are then accelerated in the electric field between the tip and the extractor, and that produces the thrust that will move the satellite. We are using this Axion system that can be seen in this picture on the left. It has a size of half a unit, a mass of half a kilogram, and it has four thrusters that produce on total 50 micronewtons and an ISP of 1,800 seconds. With that, we are going to have a thrust vector that will push us to increase our orbital velocity. And that will be what we're going to use to demonstrate the electrospray capability through orbit raising maneuvers. And for safety, we are not going to deploy when we are too close to the ISS. And we are only going to deploy when NASA approves and after we have taken successfully images to, to finish our main scientific goal. And with that trust, we are going to achieve, we're going to be using the truster for 3.5 hours, and we are going to achieve 280 meters of altitude change. We are going to use all the four trusters simultaneously, and the altitude changes and system functions will be verified using the GPS measurements before and after the maneuver is performed. The status that we are currently as of the week of April 21st, all the engineering model COTS components have been ordered. Most engineering model structural parts have been sent to machine shops. Many of them have arrived and fit checks have started. In, on the images on the right, you can see the rails and the top cap from the satellite with also a lot of mounts being fit checked for the first time. You can see an infrared rim image from one of our cameras and you can see two of the boards that we are developing for the computer. On the software, preliminary infrared output, a preliminary infrared output image driver is done, and we are currently writing the power and comms codes. For the, for the testing, we have already performed a subsystem acceptance testing and inter-subsystem functional tests. We are currently doing integration and functional tests, and we are soon going to have a test readiness review. After that, we will be ready to do we will be ready to do a bakeout, another functional test, thermal cycling test, and vibe test. Meanwhile, we are working on doing simulations to make sure that the satellite is going to withstand the thermal testing and the vibration testing. An overview of the milestones, my God, an overview of the milestones. On May 2020, the fit check and main components are going to be done. We are also going to do a TRR. Then the mass mock-up vibration test will be performed. Then on June, we'll have the space vehicle integration completed. In July and August, we're going to do the thermal vacuum test. On August, we'll do the vibration test. September, we'll do the handover to launch to the launch service provider. And on late 2020, we plan to launch. So thank you so much for, my mouse is going wild. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have questions, please contact BeaverCube staff at MIT.edu.